I'll just talk about the running backs. We got Aiden Dennis, dog. Uh, Sir Hale, dog. He scored five touchdowns against Southside. Evan Linker, man. I didn't, he's a linebacker in my eyes, but I guess he can run the ball. Dog. <laughs> Sam Kale, I didn't even know he played running back, but he's a dog. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to On the Clock. Uh, today, we're going to start out with some NFL news. Uh, some controversy happened two nights ago. Joe Mixon allegedly, allegedly, shot 11 shots and hit one uh, towards a 13-year-old um, at 1 a.m. Uh, in his neighborhood. Scotty, Jay, so you guys have any more information on that? Uh, I mean, uh, I was kind of talking to a few teachers that kind of told us about it. It was around 1 a.m. Yeah, I hit a 13-year-old. I mean, I don't know. It just kind of surprised me. I heard that this guy was just playing around outside. And I don't know why. Around the yeah, field, I, yeah. Like Nerf gun, that's what... They said, so I think Joe Mixon thought it was a gun, which I know it's dark outside, but I don't know what 13-year-old's going to go find a gun at. Well, and I, yeah. Um, so. I, the weird thing is the Bengals haven't said anything about it. His team hasn't said anything yeah. about it. Um, the NFL hasn't said anything about it. I don't think Woj or anybody like that said anything about it, but the, it's still all over everywhere. So I don't know if this is just people making talk or if this is real or – so there's a lot of yeah. questions surrounding this still. So I think it's still too early to know if it, whether if it was him, if it was his neighbor, if it was someone in his house. Um, but we'll definitely keep an eye on that and keep you guys updated. Um, so we're going to move over to some more positive stuff here. Uh, Carr to the Saints, four years, 150 mil, 100 guaranteed. Uh, do you guys think that's a very big move for the Saints? Does that make them the best team in their division? Um, um, yeah, kind of a lackluster division last year. Mm -hmm. Buccaneers on the lower end. Um, coming into this year by losing Brady, they're going to have to figure out that quarterback situation. So I think you could say that they're the front runner for that. And they're not, the Saints aren't even going to be like a, a great a minute, team. Yeah, they're going to be a game or two over 500. So I think this division looks exactly like last year with the winning team in the division, mm -hmm. 8 and 9, I think they were, or 9 and yeah. 8, the Buccaneers last year. Uh, winning that division, and I think you could see the same thing this year. Maybe a 10 win team. Yeah. But I don't. I don't I think that's the, their ceiling. Okay, and then Jace, uh, thoughts on Geno Smith, three years, 150 mil. Uh, yeah, it's going to help the... Or, not 150, sorry, 105 mil. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's going to be good uh, for the Seahawks getting a pretty good quarterback back. So, I mean, not really much to say. I mean, just... Yeah, he had a career year. Yeah. Um, yeah, and if he keep, keeps playing like that, I think the Seahawks will be a solid team and something to be reckoned with down the road. Okay, uh, releases. We had Eric Kendricks and Frank Clark released... Uh, to get teams under the cap. The Chiefs are now, I believe, 18 million under the cap. Um, and then anywhere from seven to nine million of that will go to their signing their upcoming draft class. So uh, we have probably anywhere, or probably about $10 million to work with to bring in somebody. Um, Odo Beckham's cap hit would be uh, 21 million, so he's probably out of the equation right now unless we make some moves. Um, but also saw us, um, a, a tweet, or not a tweet, it was from ESPN saying the Chiefs are looking to re-sign Juju. So okay, they so have intentions of re-signing, bringing back Juju. So I don't know if we're going to have to restructure some deals, let some people move on. We did not tag <coughs> Orlando Brown, so we're going to need a new left tackle. Yeah. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what the front office says, but I have confidence in them. And, um, you know, everybody thought we weren't going to be an amazing team this year. They didn't even pick us to win the division, and we won the Super Bowl. So uh, I think we're going to be fine. Um, and then Lamar Jackson got tagged. Um, a $32 million non-exclusive tag. So for, for what that means is Lamar is allowed to go out and negotiate with other organizations, um, but the, um, the Ravens have the right to match that offer sheet. But if he does sign with, like, say, the Falcons, say he signs a four-year, $200 million deal with the Falcons, the uh, Ravens don't want to match that, then the Falcons have to send two first-round picks to the Ravens in compensation for Lamar. Um, other notable tags, Josh Jacobs of the Raiders, Tony Pollard of the Cowboys, uh, Saquon Barkley of the uh, Giants. Those are all running backs, so their tag was uh, $10 million. Uh, Evan Ingram and Darren Payne also were tagged. Uh, Orlando Brown didn't get tagged, and I think there were a few other notable ones. So, uh, I like that for the Cowboys, bringing back Tony Pollard. Yeah, um, I, I think, think they needed to do that. Zeke doesn't seem like he's got a lot of yards left in him. No. 
which is unfortunate, but uh, everybody has their time. Jason, any thoughts on uh, uh, Josh Jacobs or um, Saquon Barkley? I mean, it's good. I like uh, Tiger Saquon. I mean, came off an injury last year, and I mean, he performed really well from what I think some people didn't expect from him. Yeah. Just coming off of a pretty like big injury. Yeah. And so coming off of a pretty good season, I could see them tagging him and hopefully seeing a lot more produ- production out of him. And then for Josh Jacob, I mean, he's also still notable, pretty good running back. So I mean, good thing that they got him since they lost Derek Carr. So I still have him and. Devontae, so. Yeah, I could almost see them trading up for a quarterback. Yeah. I don't know. Um, if they want to be competitive this year um, with Devontae Adams getting up there in age, it seems like they're going to need to be competitive soon um, in order for that trade to feel like it worked out for them. Mm-hmm. Um, other notable news that we did not put on here, uh, Daniel Jones, four-year, was it $200 million? Or no, 160 I think. It was a, it was it was a lot. It was, he got his $40 million a year. Um, so they're going to need to save money wherever they can. Um, and, you know, we'll see how that pans out. It could pan out well. It could be one of the worst contracts in NFL history. Yeah. Um, so we're going to move over to the draft, combine news. Um, Chicago likely to trade the first overall pick. Um, they, could, they could get three or four first-round picks out of this. Um, because you can have a bidding war with the Colts, Panthers, Texans, and maybe even, like we were saying, the Raiders. Yeah, I think, I think what they do is trade down to, like, three or four area. You're still going to get your D-lineman. You're going to get probably an extra first-round pick in 2024. Yep. And then you can, even if you want to trade further down, you can trade to nine or ten and maybe get two out of that. Yeah. And Um, you can build for the next, you can pick a lineman at the ten, nine or ten spot, kind of build around fields, kind of protect him. Get him weapons in the second and third, and then get him another guard or something next year. Um, I mean, and it doesn't even have to be for picks. Like, the Raiders might be, if the Chicago feels like they could tend this year, they could send Devontae yeah. to Chicago. I don't know. I don't think that's probably going to happen. But, you know, something along those lines could come out of nowhere and shock people. Um, speaking of shocking people, Anthony Richardson. Holy cow, what a combine. Jace, you want to break that down for us? I mean, yeah, I saw a video, and it was saying that, like, people weren't expecting this, but he is probably the most athletic player in this combine. Right now. Quarterback. Well, yeah, but and so I mean, he set a record for QBs for a forty time four four four. So uh, QB vert was forty point five. Yeah. I mean, also a record. Yeah, I and mean, so he's gonna be a as someone put dog on this paper. So mm-hmm. he's gonna be a good player. I could see some of these lower like whoever Chicago's first round pick goes to whoever if they need a quarterback. I could see him going pretty quick. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know where I saw this. I don't even know if this is true. But uh, some source said that he called himself uh, Cam Jackson because he modeled himself after Cam Newton and Lamar Jackson growing up. So uh, he's my third quarterback off the board after uh, Young and C.J. Stroud. I, have, I, I, I would like to see him go to Detroit at six. I think that's realistic unless, you know, obviously something happens and moves up. So it's probably not realistic at all, but a lot could shake out and a lot could happen. I, I could even see a shock and um, him go before CJ. I, I could yeah. see him maybe go before Bryce. I'm not saying he should go before Bryce. But he could. But teams are kind of looking. hype is a real thing. He's 5'10", uh, Bryce, and some teams kind of looking at that as downside, throwing over six foot five mm-hmm. guys um, and just thinking that maybe – Maybe Anthony Richardson's the better pick here for mm-hmm. longevity and having a good NFL career. But I think Bryce will still go one uh, and quarterbacks, and maybe Richardson slides it two, but mm-hmm. probably, a, yeah. th- probably the third guy. Okay, and then Nolan Smith, we talked about him last week, ran a 4.39 as a 6'3", 225-pound uh, defensive lineman. I have, I, I have seen him go anywhere from 8 to 14, um, so someone in that range could get a pretty good edge. Um, We're actually going to go to commercial real quick, and then we're going to be back with uh, Selection Sunday and Big 12 Tournament News. Rose Hill Family Dentistry is a dentist office located on 106 East Yeager Street. They're open Monday through Friday, typically from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Their passion is to make sure their patients are happy, healthy, and able to achieve a confident, amazing smile. They care for all ages, ranging from toddlers to even great-great-grandparents. You can contact them at 316-776-2144.
All right, we are getting into the prime of the NCAA basketball season right now. Uh, one seeds at the moment. Uh, Jace, you want to go ahead and read those? Uh, right now it's uh, Houston, KU, Purdue, and Alabama, and possibly UCLA. If they win on, the back 12 yeah. Depending on if they win their division, which is very possible. And so, I mean, these – I feel like a, some of these are kind of set. Purdue's probably set. I could mm -hmm. see maybe – I think I could Houston. Bet Houston is. So I could see maybe – Katie or Alabama, Alabama maybe too. moving out, which, I mean, wouldn't be the worst thing, but there's a few uh, teams that you don't normally see that could be a 15 seed that could pull up an upset. Yeah. I've seen so many TikToks recently about turnover margin and a whole bunch yeah. of this. Like, this could be a winning team, so, I mean. Well, the, I was uh, sitting around last night, and Gonzaga, I didn't even realize this, they're not winning their conference. They were playing St. Mary's. St. Mary's, yeah. They, they look, in every them. statistical category, when I looked up there, St. Mary's looked like they were the better team. Gonzaga had, like, their opponent's field goal percentage was, like, 70%. It was off the charts. Um, they ended up winning it last night, though. They did? The whole tournament. Right. It was, like, 77, like, 59, so it was kind of a blow. Oh, right. Um, all right. Uh, so, we're, if, as we move into the big dance here, who do you think has the better shot at winning? Big 12 plus Houston, because Houston's moving to the Big 12 next year, or everybody else? I'm personally taking the Big 12. I mean, you could. I'm probably going to take Big 12 just because Kay's in there. I want him to win it again. But, I mean, there's just so many other teams in the Big 12 that have a good shot at winning it. Well, not, they don't even have to win it. They just have to upset people. And I, I think that's very possible. I could see, well, I guess then upsetting it's not going to be much of a dink because there's not many Big 12 teams. They're, they're going to be like nine seasons up for Big yeah, 12. Yeah, that's so true. There's not going to be upsets. Um, but, like, I saw one uh, the other day. Kentucky was going to be, like, a six. And if yeah. K-State got a three, like, we could play Kentucky in the second round, and that's scary because, you know, they're, I mean, they're still a blue blood. Um, but we're going to move over to the Big 12 tournament predictions. So, first game, um, the play-in games, I have West Virginia over Tech. That's tonight. Yeah, is that tonight? Six o'clock. Or do you guys both have uh, West Virginia and Over Tech, too? I have West Virginia and Over Tech, okay. yeah. And then OSU, OU. Uh, I have OSU. I have OSU, too. I took OU with an okay. outsider. Um, and then moving into the first round, uh, I have I, uh, Iowa State University losing to Baylor. I uh, have also Baylor over uh, ISU. They just lost to Caleb Girls. So, um, yeah. so I got Baylor because yeah. Iowa State's kind of on a downfall yeah. right now. And then uh, after West Virginia <coughs> beats Tech, I have them losing to KU. Yeah, same. Texas over OSU. Texas over OU. Uh, yeah. Texas over OU. Okay. Um, and then K-State over TCU. I think that one's going to be a close game no matter what. Yeah, you're not going to like mine, but I put TCU. I think it'll be a close game. Um, yeah. Hey, you hate us because you hate us. No, nah, they or just get who did, they, <laughs> who did they get back? With Miles. Um, oh, shoot. Mike Miles. Mike Miles. They yeah. just he got like, back. He was going to be like the preseason Big 12 player of the year, and then he – Hurt his like knee or so, ankle or something. So yeah. it was on a downfall year. But I mean, they still have that really big center. Big center, yeah. Center to, he's huge. Yeah, he's ginormous, and I don't know whoever the sharpshooter on your team can really guard him. So uh, okay, and then we have KU over Baylor, right? Yeah. I got KU over Baylor. And then uh, K State over Texas with an upset. I have Texas over TCU just because I picked TCU. I got Texas over TCU. And then K State over KU in the finals. No. Okay, I wish that Texas. could happen, but I don't see K State and KU both making it to the Oh, that'll be so much fun. I got KU over Texas. KU by 90. Yeah, I have Kansas Dub written down, so I'm assuming that's what's going to happen. All right, um, so that is all we have. Or how do we and then Wichita State winning the AAC. Hey. N I T or AAC? Hey, Wichita State girls beat the one seed. Um, K State UConn? girls beat like South North. Florida. We beat the one seed South Florida in our conference as the eight seed. Hey, kid. So we're going to the semis, hopefully looking to win the AAC and get our bid into the tournament. The AAC run, eight seed runs in the family? No, we're six in men's. Men's is a six. Hmm. I think who's, we, who's below I think they play tonight. They play tonight. Who's, who's like the seven and eight? I don't even know. It's like Tulsa's awful. Uh, East Houston. Carolina, I think. Houston. Houston, they're, they're all right. They're, they're not very good. I think we'll beat them. Uh, oh. Beat him in the AAC championship. I think we played night against Tulsa. If it was a halftime, if you only played a half, you would have lost, lost by, by two. two. Lost by two. Good game. It's still lost. But a lot of, nonetheless, a lot of good basketball on tonight, a lot of good basketball in the next couple days. Then we're going to be without it, and we're going to be in summertime. No football, no basketball. We're going to be watching field hockey. Baseball. Um, that pitch clock is interesting. We're actually, I kind of actually want to talk about that. There was a video the other day, I think it was two days ago, of a pitcher. 
having to rush because of the clock and yeah. hitting a guy square in the chin and him just gushing yeah. blood. Well, I saw one. It was – so the uh, – I don't remember how it went, but the pitcher, like, pitched immediately, like, with, like, 10 seconds left on the clock still. Oh, and then right. he got the ball, and then he made the batter, the batter used a timeout. Because he only got one now. Yeah, he used his timeout, and then the pitcher just sat there ready to pitch, oh, and no, then as soon as he stepped in the box, he threw it. Yeah. Which, I mean, that's baseball crazy. Baseball to me, I've never played baseball, so it always seems like a mind game to me. But it seems like you can play even more now with that pitch clock, yeah. which would be interesting uh, to see. I hope it'll speed the game up, because, like, I want to get into baseball. It's just so slow sometimes. But, it should speed it up. Um, I don't know how much, but definitely it, they did it in the minor leagues and sped those games up, so I think it'll speed them up in the majors mm -hmm. too. All right. Well, I think that is all we have for you today. Um, we will be back next – no, not next week. We're on spring break, so in two or three weeks we'll be back, um, hopefully breaking down some draft boards. Hopefully Chicago will have moved out. Uh, a lot of things will change. Uh, we'll, have a, we'll, have a, we'll have a final four more than likely, and um, we'll see you then.